Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, uh, why the are there no bears in Britain? I'd imagine the same reason there's not many bears in, or grizzly bears in California anymore. Because they were all killed. Because they probably killed livestock and maybe children or something. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there were bears on Britain at some point. Let's However, go, guys. Britain doesn't have any wild bears roaming. It's there are eight species of bear that live across the globe. However, Britain doesn't have any wild bears roaming its countryside. But that wasn't always the case. In fact, around 7,000 years ago, there were thought to be more than 13,000 brown bears in Britain. They fed on large mammals like deer, elk, and bison, as well as consuming berries and roots when prey was scarce. But as little as 1,000 years ago, all of the bears disappeared from the British Isles. So, what happened to Britain's bears? Where did they go? And, and will they ever come back? I hear that the polar bear is the biggest bear, but is it bigger than the Kodiak brown bear? Because I understand most brown bears, a uh, polar bear is going to be bigger, but the Kodiak brown bear is enormous. Um, it lives on an island called Kodiak Island, which is uh, off the south coast of, of Alaska. If anyone happens to know the answer to that. Britain used to be attached to mainland Europe via a land Dogger bridge. land. This meant that animals could traverse to and from Britain with ease. Whatever species were in mainland Europe, like the European brown bear, were also found within Britain. Today, there are around 18,000 brown bears across 22 different countries within Europe, excluding Russia. The largest population is in the Carpathian Mountains of Romania. Inside Russia, there are thought to be over 100,000 brown bears, about 36,000 of which are in European Russia. But as the last ice age came to an end, the ice melted and the sea levels rose. The land bridge that was connecting continental Europe to Britain was soon buried beneath the sea, around 8,500 years ago. And those animals that were inhabiting Britain were now trapped on the island. They needed to adapt to the changes that were happening across Britain, otherwise they faced extinction. After the last ice age, the landscape and habitats changed throughout Britain, in part due to a changing and warmer climate, and in part due to human settlements. Forests came and went. Vast grasslands contracted in size and gave way to woodland. Native animals came under pressure. Those who had been well adapted to the cold of the ice age now struggled in Britain. This led to the population of bears dwindling. One of the large mammals that the bears fed on was the Pleistocene woodland bison, Bison shirdensaki. These bison began to die out. They lost their open grassland habitats to encroaching woodland and were hunted by humans. This species of bison also existed in mainland Europe. From fossil evidence and mass excavations by scientists, it has been concluded that this species of bison was the most heavily targeted animal by human hunters. They were used for their meat, bones, horns, and hide. They became extinct from Britain 6,000 years ago, and with them gone, the bears lost a valuable source of prey. But there were still deer that bears could hunt, and these provided food for other British species that have also gone extinct, such as the Eurasian lynx, thought to have been in Britain until the 17th century, and the wolf, which survived in Britain until 1760. With nowhere to escape due to Britain being sealed off from the rest of Europe, the remaining animals had to avoid human persecution to survive. Just like in other parts of the world, many large mammals died out in Britain after the last ice age. But those that did survive beyond that, like the brown bear, the bison, wolf, Eurasian lynx, and even Britain's moose, were sadly driven to extinction by humans. The expansion of human settlements, where woodlands were destroyed to make way for houses and farmland, restricted the wild animals' habitats. It is hard for scientists to determine exactly when the bears became extinct in Britain. Specimens of them remain relatively rare. Some have been found in caves, fens, and bogs. Right, I love just the random, like, scientist stock footage. You could use this for so many <laughs> different things. Remain relatively rare. Some have been found in caves, fens, and bogs, but they are patchy, and many have not been dated yet. 
The specimens provide evidence of their existence from the very south of England to the north of Scotland, spanning the length of Britain. They were present from the Stone Age to post-medieval times, but with their woodlands chopped down for timber and the species feeling the pressure of being hunted, they started to become rare shortly after. As Britain entered Roman times from AD 43 to AD 410, there is evidence of a greater number of bears in the region. However, this unusual spike in specimens from that era isn't thought to have been from a sudden boom in the population of bears, which would indicate that they were recovering from an more sighting. Line. Instead, it is believed that it is from the large numbers of bears that were being imported from mainland Europe by the Romans. They brought over the bears to be used in entertainment, such as bear dancing and bear baiting. For this reason, it is difficult to say whether the bear specimens that scientists have uncovered in Britain circus. are descendants of these imported bears. A Roman circus sounds really cool. That scientists have uncovered in Britain are descendants of these imported bears, or are from the original British bears that once thrived in the wild. When the last wild bear died is not yet clear, but scientists are working hard to try to pinpoint a time frame. Although the wild bears of Britain became extinct, they were still imported into the country beyond Roman times. Bears were present in the Tower of London That's a polar and continued bear. to be imported into Britain until well into the 20th century. Just like they had been for the Romans, dancing bears were a common form of entertainment for the paying public. They have been symbolic throughout Britain for hundreds of years, appearing in coats of arms, being worshipped in Celtic mythology, and appearing widely as teddy bears for children. They were also why I thought Teddy Roosevelt made the teddy bear be used for their body parts, with bear grease still being sold in Britain in the early 20th century as a reputed treatment for hair loss. Although the British bears once roamed the island's wilderness, could they survive there now, or has the landscape changed too much? As with many... And you have so many people there, you would... Maybe black bears? locally extinct species, there is always the question of reintroducing the animals that were once native to a country. I feel like black bears might be more suited to a present-day Britain because they're not as large, and I feel like they might be more... Obviously, all bears seem to be omnivorous, except polar bears and panda bears, which are Pandas are vegetarian, polars are carnivores. But black bears, and they'd be less threatening to humans than something like a... Yeah, so I, I think the less resources compared to their more ancient habitats and more prevalence of humans would just make, if you want any bear on Britain, maybe a black bear. But I know that wouldn't be the, you know, repopulating the sort of indigenous bear species but it might be the better the option. rewilding is popular in Britain at the moment. It is an attempt to reverse a damaged landscape and revert Britain's lost wilderness using more traditional methods. Some projects have involved bringing back some ancient wildlife to achieve this. You know the, the term sort of like unnatural? It doesn't really make sense to me because I, I hope I'm not just nitpicking at something stupid. I think I probably am. I don't care. Whatever. But... The, the term unnatural kind of refers to human-made, right? But humans are animals like any other. And in, you know, if say 60 million years went by, then the way that humans, you know, burned fossil fuels and had nuclear reactors and everything, to a species, you know, 100 million years in the future, we would be seen as just another animal. And the events that, <clears throat> cause, you know, human-induced animal extinctions would be seen just like any other animal-induced extin extinctions, probably nothing compared to us. Do you know what I mean? Like, we are animals. We are just as much an animal as any other animal, right? So why is it what we do is unnatural? What, what we do is just as natural as anything else, right? I mean, the, us having animals go extinct is just another way that animals went extinct in in the course of, of the animal record. You, do you know what I mean? 
I, I'm not trying to, you know, play dumb and, and say and not understand what people mean by unnatural, right? It's, it was man-made in, in some way. But I'm trying to say that nothing is really unnatural because we're as much a part of nature and we evolved as a part of nature like every other organism. And so technically, nothing we do can be considered unnatural, you know? It, it, I'm not trying to say, therefore, we can just do whatever we want. I'm just trying to make a point on, on that term, you know? A small population of European bison has been introduced. Whoa. They look like a combination. It looks like a wildebeest from Africa and a bison had a baby. And that's this. Juiced to a small area <clears throat> in Britain to be used in natural woodland management. They debark the weaker trees, which naturally fall and decompose on the forest floor. It is a more natural way to fall trees than using machinery. And the presence of the bison has a positive effect in other ways, such as providing natural fertilizer from their dung. If they do well there, then they could be introduced to other areas too. And maybe one day they will become a common sight across Britain's rural land landscape once more. But reintroducing a potential predator like the brown bear into a place where there aren't any dangerous predators is a whole other situation. Might want to go with the black bear. According to a survey... But I guess that might wouldn't be considered like re-naturalizing the area. A quarter of Britons wanted to see brown bears reintroduced to British woodlands. However, unlike people who live in other parts of Europe or North America, Britons aren't used to sharing their countryside with bears. The British would need to understand the safety precautions needed when out hiking in the woods, as they haven't lived alongside bears for 6,000 years. People would need to be educated about the protocols when coming face to face with a deadly animal on a gentle Sunday afternoon stroll. Those who live in bear habitats would have to take certain precautions, such as storing their food and trash securely and closing windows and doors. Are those dingleberries or it's, Introducing or it's bears balls? would require a whole different... Oh, God, I see it. Okay. ...mindset for Britons. It would also bring into question the use of guns with people needing to defend themselves when in bear country, something no government is going to want to... Yeah, there's nothing worse than people who are extremely enthusiastic about something and, and seem to, like, be very knowledgeable and, and like, yes, br do it. And then those same people be like, oh, I didn't realize it. Nothing more annoying on this planet. It's like, oh, they killed my dog. Oh, I saw I was mauled by a bear introduce into a firearm-free Britain. Although it would be exciting to see brown bears in Britain once more, it is probably not a sensible rewilding project for this modern era. However, there is a chance to see European brown bears in Britain, and not necessarily inside a zoo either. The UK's largest brown bear exhibit, called Bear Wood, has just four brown bears roaming a 7.5-acre woodland alongside wolves and lynxes. It is safely fenced off from the public, but allows people to step back in time to observe the woodland wildlife of medieval... I don't think that's keeping a bear back. ...Britain. That's all for today. That was nice. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a Very comment nice. with what you would like to see in the following videos. So, if you want to see bears at all, with minimum, uh, you know, threat to humans, I would go with the black bear. Not saying black bears can't hurt or kill a human, but much less likely than a brown bear, I would say. Um... But I understand that kind of the whole point of rewilding is returning in, you know, animal species that were there before and black bears weren't. So I get that. Um, it's really, really cool, guys. Love you all. Hope you're all doing well. I'd appreciate uh, hitting the buttons, the good buttons, not the bad one. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next video. Bye.